Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan Newple here, episode 177 of the Noop Sports Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm excited for this show. We have another very special guest, and we're going to talk a lot today. We have we have kind of a mixed bag of talking today. We're going to talk to uh, my friend John Wright here in just a minute. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to thank you for giving us a little bit of your time and attention. I know you could bring giving your attention anywhere in the world, and this internet's full of things you could be looking at, and you're watching this show right now. Uh, and so I really appreciate the time you're giving us here. Um, football season is about here. We're recording this on a Tuesday. Football season's Thursday and into this weekend, so super excited uh, for NFL coming, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that, I'm sure, as we get into uh, – to more here with John. So without further ado, I'm going to bring John Wright, the co-founder of Stats Drone on. John, how are you, my friend? Pretty good. You? I'm doing well, man. I'm really excited to talk to you. I know we've chatted uh, at events and, and things in the past, and I'm, I'm super excited for you to share your story and what you got going on with the crew. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So how's your day going, John? You uh, First of all, where, where are you living these days? I know I've watched some of your your uh you know social media and it seems like you're always on the move so where are we at today in the world yeah today we're, we're at home in uh, montreal so uh this is a base and yeah it's been a, a lot of conferences this year so it's been a lot of opportunity to travel and i think for the rest of the year closing it off uh there's uh there's no shortage of events no there really isn't i just got back from namescon which i know you're a domainer as well you and i kind of share that in common where we're both in the gambling domain space and and, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I don't usually go to the those types of industry events, but it was neat to kind of venture out, get into another little industry and learn what some of those monsters in that space are just doing. I mean, there's some people doing some really big things in the domaining space. Uh, before we dive into you, anything on the domain space uh, on your mind? Uh, not really, other than, I mean, anyone that I've looked in that's been involved in the gambling domain space has done pretty well. Um, like, you know, when you look at what domains can sell for, it's, uh, you know, for stuff that's been around for the, like the last, uh, five, 10 or 20 years, uh, some of these domains are worth quite a bit of money. And I think for a lot of people out there that actually have valuable domains, they don't know what they're worth. So it's up yeah. to them to decide, well, how did they sell them and what marketplace and what price? And I think that's, uh, that's the mystery that everyone doesn't really have. Yeah, absolutely. And it was fun to kind of hear other people's take on that. And I think you're right, you know, knowing what a domain is worth is very tough. But anyway, this isn't all about domains. We're gonna we're gonna dive in here to you. And I want to hear more about you, what you uh, have been up to in your life and, and kind of what got you into stats drone. Uh, but first, just tell us about your path to get there. Sure. Uh, it's a long, weird path. And I think anyone in gambling has uh, some sort of weird story. Uh, for me, uh, when I graduated uh, university, I got a degree in engineering focusing on robotics. So um, I had a nice career path lined up in front of me, but I got sidetracked with an opportunity to do professional gambling. And the reason why I decided to take it was I'm like, okay, I can make some pretty good money and it'll be fun. And if it doesn't work, I mean, I've got a degree to fall back on. So in my case, I, I had a lot going for me. So that led to a, a career in professional gambling, playing uh, casinos, online casinos, uh, a bit of poker and some sports betting. And I started to see the ecosystem that online gambling was becoming. It's like if they could afford to pay out all like people that are taking money from the ecosystem, the ecosystem obviously has a lot more coming into it. And you just get exposed to the marketing side of things. So that led me down the path of helping launch online casinos and affiliate programs, running affiliate programs. And then that gave me like a deeper knowledge of the affiliate marketing space where um, I felt back then, and I still feel the same today, that affiliates can actually earn a bigger uh, slice of the pie. And what's interesting about affiliates is that, you know, you look at the bankroll that's required to launch an affiliate site. I mean, you could do it today with just a YouTube channel. I mean, you're not even spending yeah. like a single sure. dollar. Um, and back then, I mean, you might not have used YouTube, but you can still say, well, what does a website cost? Well, it costs you $10 to register a domain. And what's hosting? $50 a year. All right, so for $60, it's like you got a website that could actually bring in lots of money. And I mean, the best part of it is once it grows, you can actually sell it. So in my winding path of getting to where I've done, where I've gone in, you know, creating affiliate sites, uh, I started to see a lot of things and issues in affiliate marketing that weren't being solved. And mm. um, kind of having this engineering and stats background, I think has actually helped me quite a bit where I'm looking at these problems that people are talking about, but they're not really saying it's explicitly a problem. 
And if they did say explicitly it was a problem, then I think you'd have a lot more companies going, let's tackle that and solve that as a solution. So I'm enjoying this journey where, you know, Stastron was almost a mistake, but it's really from that whole collective experience being on both sides of the fence. And, you know, I'm just kind of passionate about taking, you know, what I've got for the skill set, the marketing skill set, and then taking, yeah. you know, this uh, data science behind it and putting it to another level. Yeah, for anyone that's been in the affiliate market, you know, the affiliate space, you know, there's a number of, of just common issues and things, annoyances more than anything, maybe not issues, but more annoyances and, and improvements that could be had. And, and I know we've talked and you've kind of showed me, you know, what stats drones out to, to help and what it's out to solve. So let's dive into stats drone a little bit and talk a little bit more specific about the issue you're really trying or issues you're really yeah. trying to solve there. Yeah, I think the issues, they're on both sides of the fence from the affiliates and the affiliate program or operators, but they actually kind of connect somehow. Uh, so I'll start with the affiliate side. Um, so if you're an affiliate site and you're you're promoting anything, it doesn't matter. It could be sports books or casinos or bingo. We all have a similar job to do now, which is if a new brand opens up and you want to promote it, we all have to create that. And if you look at the state of affiliate marketing today, I mean, the days of putting up a banner are almost gone. So it's kind of like, well, what do you need to do? I need that nice logo. I need that bonus, which is basically putting data into a database. And you got to create this system. So we're all collectively mm -hmm. doing this in the background. Now, when that bonus changes from, let's say, a 50% offer to 100% offer, well, okay, you might not think it's a, that big of a deal to update it. <laughs> but if you're not aware of this, you're missing out on an opportunity of increasing your conversion which affects the operator. So that's one side of the uh, of the game. The other side of the game is as an affiliate manager, when you do have that new offer, you have let's pretend you, you have a database of 5,000 affiliates that are working with you. You're now going to email them saying, hey, we've got a new offer, please update it across your site. So maybe you're lucky if 20% of those emails get read and action. And then you've got an 80% of that database that hasn't read your email because it's gone into spam or it's in hundreds of emails that they haven't paid attention to. And you're tracking them down one by one. You're like, okay, this affiliate here responds best when I hit them on Skype. This one is on mm -hmm. Facebook and this one on WhatsApp. And you're doing a lot of work. So there's not really a system in place where you can just update one something in a, in a database and have it propagate across thousands of affiliates reaching millions of pages. So stuff like that, I think, will eventually exist. But it's a matter of like, well, what does this look like? And do affiliates trust this type of ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, you know, from an affiliate side, you know, working on the actual affiliate side myself, uh, that it's such an issue. It really is. And it, like you said, it may not sound like it, you know, oh, it was, but some of these programs do update their bonus several times a year, their bonus yeah. offer. And then, you know, okay, if I have one site and one page that I have to update, fine. But as affiliates and affiliate companies grow, we end up having hundreds of sites with hundreds of pages and the offer plastered all over the place. That becomes a full week job to just update one offer if you don't have it done in some sort of a smart way. And I think that's what you're saying here is, why don't we just have a place we can update the offer and boom, it's updating your whole affiliate yeah. profile, your whole network of sites. And I think that's genius. I, I, it's needed. It's for sure needed. So I'm confirming that from an affiliate point of view. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all data. So, I mean, when that data point updates, I mean, why can't we all just say, you know what? We trust this data source, so let's have it feed into our systems and automate it. You know, it's. Uh, yeah. I think this is going to be definitely the future of affiliate marketing, and without a doubt, when you think about the compliance component of it, it's actually forcing more of this stuff onto us. So, as an operator, yes. you're like, well, I need my affiliates to be compliant, and as the affiliate, like, you know, if you're working in a market, it's like, okay, this bonus cannot be free spins in the the jurisdiction of United Kingdom. So how are yeah. we going to geo block that or what can we do to change the bonus? And that's a lot of work and that's programming work and, and there's more data. And if you if you pretend that there's 10,000 affiliates in, a, in a, the whole world that could be actually promoting this bonus, that's 10,000 jobs that have to all be done doing the exact same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's awesome. I mean, that's a really cool function and that's something that you're working on through Statstrom. But I also know you're attacking, you know, as the name suggests, the stat side of things, you yeah. know, the where which I can also attest is something that's super important to understand the numbers from an affiliate side. And I'm assuming from an affiliate manager side as well. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that piece of Statstrom. Yeah, I won't share everything, but I'll, I'll share a lot in the sense that 
Um, what I've discovered over the years, especially in other stats apps that have existed and ones that I've used personally, um, not all affiliates pay attention to the things they need to. And sometimes it's a matter of having that data in front of your eyes. So um, like just for example, it's like basic KPIs of like how much, like, you know, one of the, mo the more common ones in affiliate marketing is, uh, you know, EPC, like earnings per click. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of affiliates that don't always chase it. Like sometimes they're chasing the wrong thing. Like, I will give you 50% rev share and then I want to be top spot on your page. So you do that. But if that program doesn't convert well, I mean, what good is 50% when that could be a 50% of zero versus mm -hmm. a program that's only offering you 25%, but that 25% could be Bet365, which they're on mm -hmm. TV all the time. And they're one of the most recognized brands in the world. So um, yeah, from a stats perspective, uh, a lot of affiliates aren't paying attention to this stuff. And even in trying to get the data, it's once you hand that data over to an affiliate, usually it's coming in a CSV file or it's like a giant table. And even if you put a graph on it, it's uh, people aren't able to take out what they really need from it. Like just to give yeah. you one uh, basic example. So you'll have uh, an affiliate program that has multiple brands and you're like, okay, this is how much money we make. And this is all of our clicks. So that's my EPC, right? Well, maybe that's wrong because what happens if you have three brands and one brand is outperforming the other two by a long shot. So you should actually send more traffic to that brand. Now let's break down that single brand. And what happens if there's four campaigns that you can choose to send traffic mm. to? And if one of those campaigns is outperforming by a long shot, you should mm. send more of your traffic to there. So there's sure. so much lost money in the, the whole ecosystem and the whole global world of affiliate marketing. And I think, you know, like, I, I, of course, I'm going to say, you know, you need a stats app to, to have this come to life, but it's, uh, it's not easy for affiliates to know where to get the data and the first time they see it, they're, that's when they get these aha moments and going, yeah. okay, I can actually make a smart business decision based on what I know, even though the data was all, always there. It's just a matter of like, can I repurpose this data so they can visually see and know instantly what they're looking at? Yeah, you brought up some really good points there. And, you know, on top of, but on top of this making you really think from a business side and really analyze the numbers deeper. It's a convenience thing. And, and, and all of us know, you know, any affiliate out there knows we get obsessed with our numbers. We get obsessed with stats. We want to check every day if there was signups. We want to check all the time how things are going. And when you have, you know, 10, 20, 30 affiliate relationships and different programs you're working with, you got to go, you got to log on, you got to get to the right report, you got to see the stat. So it takes a full day to go and check the stats. Whereas I think Stats Drone has slick interfaces that's going to say, hey, here it is across the board. Boom, there it is. You log into Stats Drone and you see it. Am, yeah. I, am I correct in saying that? So convenience-wise, it also saves time from that side. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the core element of starting to say, well, why create an app when there are already others in existence? So that, that's a basic uh, premise. Sure. Like, we got to save time. But I, I felt like the business aspect of it was more important. Like, so, like, like you said about checking your stats, well, if a program is starting to take off and increase, like, you know, the performance, you want to know that so you can send more yes. traffic there. Yeah. Likewise, imagine if you had a campaign that's consistently delivering uh, profits or, or revenue every day. And if that drops to zero, you kind of need to be flagged. You need to be mm. alerted. And mm -hmm. the only way you're going to alert this is by looking at the data. So if you're not looking at it every day, I mean, it's no different than Google Analytics. I mean, you should be checking your, your data or at least have an alarm bell that goes off that says, hey, we used to have like a thousand daily visitors and now it's gotten to zero. Well, yeah. of course, your stats are going to reflect that same painful realization. But yeah, uh, you need you need these alert systems in place that protect you and warn you saying, hey, you're leaking money and there's a problem. The sink's going to ship if you don't plug this hole. So pay attention to it. Let's shift gears for just a second. I know, you know, we I could talk about this stuff all day long, John. I really could. So I think we could have multiple sessions to talk about this. But I want to shift gears and really talk about the affiliate marketing space in general. And really, you know, I know you're not living in the United States right now, but really more focused on the United States side of it. Because I know a lot of listeners of this show and watchers of this show could potentially be, you know, current affiliates or people trying to get into the affiliate space. What is your, I guess, uh, you know, view right now of how the affiliate space looks specifically to sports betting in the United States? Do you have any just high level thoughts on where that industry is at currently? Yeah, I, I think everyone, especially going to the conferences that we've been at, they're almost saying the same thing. Like there's way too much opportunity here. 
and it's early days. So not only is it early days and people are making pretty good revenue in being in the space, uh, they're just looking at this as going, this is, it looks like it's infinite opportunity. So the numbers we're seeing of what revenue is being generated in like the state of New York as just one small example, this is just scratching the surface. Like this is people mm -hmm. just getting exposed to the marketing of it. And we probably know that the marketing is gonna be maybe toned down when it comes to like the whole responsible gaming. But uh, we're not even at the early days of this being normalized where, you know, yes, sure. People are, are getting the apps to bet on sports, whether it's like, you know, FanDuel or, or DraftKings or BetMGM. But I think there's so much more opportunity for like we haven't seen how many players is going to become the new norm. And we're probably like a good five years away from that becoming normal. Like just imagine the next Super Bowl, like what commercials are we going to see? Well, we don't know. But even if the commercials weren't there. We know that companies like the BetMGMs and the FanDuels, they are going to up their marketing budgets year after year. Affiliates are definitely going to jump on board. And when they see an opportunity, like the, the whole aspect of like affiliate marketing in sports betting in America is not really on their radar. It's more on the radar of people that are already in the space. So yeah. I think what's going to happen is as more of these people that are either affiliate marketers or SEOs or want to get into the space, once they see all these interesting sites kind of come up and they're like, wait a minute. I'm now noticing the site that I've never seen before, but I can kind of figure out their marketers, how much money they're making. This data is going to be available to them at, at some way. And you, you can find it indirectly. Like when you see when DraftKings and FanDuel publish their reports and New York State publishes how much money and revenue is being generated, the answer is all in front of us. And it's we all know it's early days. But do you think, you know, this is a question I, I get a lot. Do you, you know, do you think the, the little guy, the small affiliate, the the one person show that, you know, wants to put out some sites and some ads and get their licenses and start to become an affiliate. Do you think they even have a shot these days? Because they're they're going up against massive companies, yeah. you know, as, a you know, Katina Media, Better Collective, American Affiliate, Ray Tech, all these just massive affiliate companies. Plus, you've got the big media companies themselves that are now really ranking and, and really getting their content to rank for betting terms. So does the little guy, and you know, I say the little guy, just the the one man show, the two man team that has a site or has a network, do they even have a shot? I, I think they do, and and I look at that from two different angles. So the first angle is, okay, let's approach it from an SEO perspective. Like we want to rank and try to challenge this. I see people that are, are already experienced in affiliate marketing that aren't in gambling yet that will cross over, and they're going to take with them their skills and their work ethic. So when they've dominated or made a lot of money in other industries that are probably maybe just like very competitive and it took them a lot of time or hard work to get to that level, that's the next wave of affiliates coming in. And I think with also with the, the age we're in today, which for some reason, I think a lot of people aren't paying attention to it, is the world of video. I mean, like, here we are, right? Yeah. So it's look how easy it is for someone just to be like, OK, I'm going to start on YouTube and I'm just going to do slot reviews and then turn into something. I mean, even though like a guy like Brian Christopher has been at it for, I don't know how many years, um, everyone's kind of shocked at how fast he went from, wait a minute, not only did he go into the streaming space, he leapfrogged everyone and basically became number one, which looked like overnight. So these overnight success stories are possible, but it's all about uh, tackling the medium going, well, do you need to be that professional streaming studio that's powered by rake tech hypothetically, or can you just be like, you know what? I'm John and I'm passionate about sports and I'm just going to start chatting and talking about my favorite team. And that's all I do. I think when, once you do that, there's always a market for niche opportunities. Uh, niche as a buzzword in the affiliate marketing world is maybe beaten to death, but this is the perfect example of how you don't need to be that rake tech or how it's impossible yeah. because not only are rake tech taking all the money, you know, your local news station has affiliate sites uh, like affiliate links on there. So all those players are disappearing. It's you can create your own network. And I, I still see this as a lot of people, they're going to struggle to be like, you know what, I'm going to try video. Like we, we know what the world of video is like. It's difficult to get started because people, they're like perfectionists. They're like, oh, I don't sound good. But go go to back to Brian Christopher's first video. And it's like, what is it going to be like? It's going to be amateur, yeah. but people are going to love it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate that insight there. I Again, this kind of stuff I could talk about forever. And maybe we'll do a focus show that we talk a. Uh, uh, Maybe we can do a regular show where we're talking uh, affiliate marketing. And I think there's such an interest in this area. I have lots of conversations, and I'm sure you do as well, just about where it's headed and where it's going. So 
Uh, I'd love to dive into that more uh, in the future, but for sake of time today, we'll move on and, and kind of go from here. Uh, so let's get kind of back into stats drone real quick. What's the future look like? Where are you headed? Is there any, you know, big things that you're looking for in the future or where's the, where's the software headed? Yeah, uh, good question. We have a roadmap and a big challenge in front of us. And my, my short answer to that is kind of going full, fully into the business intelligence space where mm. it's uh, what, what's behind that. Um, there's AI behind it. And that's not an easy thing to just say, I'm going to give you a one word answer. And yeah, that's AI. It's, there's a lot more to it. And that's going to take time in developing those teams. Um, the thing that I'm focusing a lot more is on right now is data science and data visualization. So I'm doubling down on that. And the more I dig into it, the more I realize there's a whole industry in affiliate marketing that isn't exposed to data analytics, data science, mm -hmm. data visualization, and business intelligence. Like we, we take it for granted and we think we know what we're doing, but until you run into someone that does this for a living or they go really deep into it, uh, that's what we're getting into right now. So we didn't realize we were going to end up in this aspect yeah. of our company being ironically enough stats thrown but it's exactly what we've become. So personally, I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I, I think this is gonna start changing over the next couple of years. So it won't be us that that's part of it. It's gonna be a lot of companies and it's gonna be existing companies that say that will say, you know what, we actually need to double down on this and um, we can't not have this, this department. Awesome, well, very cool. Well, John, for sake of time, I'm gonna get off here, but any last words, anything you want to say uh, to the audience? You know, there may be people that are looking to use Stastrone. How would they get to it? How would they contact you? I know you're all over the place. I actually, one of the things I respect about you most is your hustle and that you see you everywhere, which I think is an amazing uh, quality. But if somebody wanted to uh, get a hold of you and Stastrone, how would they do it? Uh, well, look for my name, but use the keyword Stastrone because, I mean, there's way too many John rates in the world. You're going to find thousands of them <laughs> on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, ironically enough, I've, I found one or two other John Wrights in the gambling industry. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm John at statsdrone.com. If you want to email me, um, you know, just type in those keywords, John Wright, Statsdrone. Uh, don't forget the Statsdrone part. So uh, yeah, I'm everywhere. LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. Cool, John. Well, awesome. Well, I appreciate your time here today. We'll put all those links out in the show notes. That way people can get to it. And I look forward to having you on and maybe doing another yeah. second edition of this talk. Count me in. All right. Sounds good, my friend. Take care. And hopefully we'll see you at the next uh, one of the next events. I know we kind of go on the similar tour. So hopefully yeah. we'll see you in person again here soon. Probably Florida. All right. Take care, John. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye bye. All right. That was John Wright of Stats Drone. Super good guy in the industry. Been around, has a lot of experience, uh, especially in the affiliate world. And so if you're looking for any type of advice, you know, John's one of those guys also that will We'll just give advice for free anytime, right? I mean, I hate to say that about John, but he just, he loves to help people and uh, usually doesn't even have an agenda in mind when he's doing that, which I really respect and love about John. So I, I urge you to reach out to him, talk to him and uh, pick his brain a little bit. And uh, I think he can help you a lot with StatsDrone if you're actually in the affiliate space. So um, that was episode, what was that? 177, we're creeping up on 200 here people. I hope we can get to it uh, maybe by the end of the year, but probably looking like 2023. So thank you all for your attention. Really appreciate you tuning in here today. If you have any comments, I'm Ryan Nupel at Noop out on any of the social media channels. Uh, shoot me a message on LinkedIn or wherever you can find me. Until next time, stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.